Shang, is there a problem in Australia when it comes to our childcare system? It is and it isn't. Depending on the system and how you compare it to other countries, childcare is one of the Western world's most challenging policy areas to crack. On the one hand, you're trying to achieve a higher workplace participation. In other words, you're trying to ensure that both parents, if they want to, have the ability to return to work as early as possible. And on the other hand, the issue of ensuring that from an educational learning continuum, that children, particularly those children from zero to five years old, are given the maximum opportunity to for maximum development. So those are the twin drivers. Now, the new Labour government has upped the ante, uh, shall I say, over their competitors in their offer to working parents. They're talking about universal childcare. Now, what does that mean? Great and question, we, Shang. I wanted to ask you that. What does that mean? What is universal childcare? It does sound like it's like free, isn't it? It's it like does free. sound free. Are you about to tell me it's not free? I'll let the Labor, the new Labor government explain for themselves. We asked that question to, at the time, the Labor opposition leading up to the election. And they refused to use the word free. It was, that was one of the very interesting reactions from them. I'm going to read what they sent me, right? They said, they're going to get the ACCC to design a price regulation mechanism to drive out off-pocket costs down for good. The Productivity Commission to conduct a comprehensive review of the sector with the aim of implementing a universal 90% subsidy for all families. So that means it doesn't sound free at all. But that is suggesting uh, that, what, 90% of out-of-pocket costs for childcare will be reimbursed for everybody? So that's the new question. So does that mean that any fee that any childcare uh, provider asks for from parents, the new federal Labor government will pay 90% of any fee? Is that what they mean? I, I, I don't think they've got, I don't think they've figured it out either. Now, they might clarify, they might surprise us, who knows? But we're trying to figure out, okay, how are they going to do it? What are the new rules? Are they going to have rules for how you set fees? Who knows? And given that there are existing laws that prevent governments from setting prices, the governments can't do that uh, unless they want to change the law. Then oh, that opens up a new Pandora's box. If you're going to set prices for childcare, then are you going to set prices for medical stuff? Are you going to set prices for aged care? Are you going to set prices for petrol, housing? It opens up a Pandora's box of other questions. So, Another Pandora's box of questions that's opening up in my head, Chang, as you're e explaining all of this, is... Whatever the Labor government goes on to do in relation to childcare, what would you recommend they do when it comes to if they're wanting to increase work workforce participation by mums and dads, by male and female caregivers, how do you offset that with also trying to uphold family connection, parental caregiver responsibility within the family for raising children? How do you go about balancing those two things? That's a very good question. You have the economic imperatives of trying to live economically in Australia, and it's not easy. Prices are going up. Interest rates have just gone up a bit more. Families, particularly young families, are feeling the pinch. How do you ensure that you have an economic life that supports your family? But at the same time, how do you balance that with the need for nurturing relationships within the family. Interestingly enough, a few days ago, I was actually in Queensland for our ACA Queensland conference. And that was actually one of the topics uh, on discussion too. How do you balance those two issues? And that has hardly been discussed. In the end also, and I'm sure your, your audience is very acutely aware, it's not about trying to force both parents to go to work. It's about choice. I think both political parties also agree that parents are the ultimate decision makers are best equipped to know what is best for their children. So trying to push both parents to work is not necessarily what I think the two major parties are saying. I think what they're saying is they're trying to make it easier if both parents want to go to work, but then 
one parent wants to stay at home, for example, they can if they want to. But then the flip side is, how do you address the economic pressures that are increasing every single day to families, particularly young families? Hope 1032. Thanks for listening.